So my name is Mika. Um, so I'm here, um, you know, to, to run a panel about social media on behalf of Smartly. And let me first introduce our panelists. So Ann from Small Giant Games, Felix from Facebook, and then Janos from Neverthink. Uh, with the hoodie, everybody will remember. I, I still almost want to say Armada, but uh, that's old, old news, right? So, welcome guys, thanks for being here. So, just before we dive in, so, um, how many of you know Smartly? Otto, yeah, great, you know, a few guys. Um, you might want to check out Palehti, you know, if you've read Finnish this morning, there, there was some news about funding. So, Smartly basically is one of the, the fastest growing Facebook marketing partners. Helps basically companies like eBay to automate and scale their Facebook marketing, and including Instagram. Now, what Smartly also does, they work quite a lot with, uh, with games companies. Uh, games companies like uh, Space Ape Games, uh, Nordeos, uh, people like that, they use, uh, use Smartly for automating their Facebook and Instagram. Uh, marketing and also scaling the marketing. Um, so that's why if you wanted to take the stage and just you know discuss with some of these like great minds about like acquiring users in social media, not only acquiring with them but acquiring in like smart way. Um, before going there, maybe a brief introduction. Anne. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Anne Vu, and I am currently the director of UA at Small Giant Games. Uh, I've been working in mobile games for eight years now, and five of those years have been in mobile UA. Yep. Nice that you're here. Hi, guys. I'm Felix. I'm working with Facebook. Um, I'm three and a half years with Facebook, um, part of the global gaming team. So we're a team in Facebook that works with uh, mobile and console and RMG, real money gambling advertisers. I'm particularly focused on mobile gaming in EMEA and uh, working with a bunch of companies who are here today and with me on stage. So awesome to be here. Hi, uh, my name is Janos. Uh, I just recently joined Everything, but I actually had a background also in mobile gaming, specifically working in different capacities, dominantly around user acquisition. Thanks, guys. Um, so you got an idea. So there's a, there's, a, there's a huge platform, there's Facebook, and there's a couple of very, very seasoned, experienced uh, user acquisition experts. So that's how we want to play this. Um, so, but first of all, and um, and, and sorry, Felix, this is not for you. But okay. like, considering social media, like and uh, Janos, what do you consider? Like, where would, where do you, where have you been acquiring users? If you talk about social, what is social for you guys? Um, social is a platform where you can reach um, a lot of people um, through um, engagement in their product. So for, for me, social media channels would be uh, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, Tumblr. Um, these are pretty popular social media platforms that you can also um, reach via advertising. All right. Uh, to further Anne's point, uh, pretty much I think what is the interesting part, especially for user acquisition, is the depth of the demographic data. That's something that in a normal scenario you would not be able to get out from any other type of ad network. You can always target by technical specifications, but platforms like Facebook are the ones that are allowing us to essentially fine grain target for the demographic profile that you are literally after. Is that, is that the main difference if you compare these kind of social media platforms? Um, so, sorry, the main difference for different social media platforms would be the capabilities of each. I really like working with Facebook particularly because it has the most granular data. Uh, the insights are, um, the data transparency is really, really awesome. Uh, it has also um, diverse uh, ad placements, which I think is really important when you're reaching um, a diverse audience um, for for many uh, verticals, from gaming to e-commerce to uh, travel and and beyond. Yeah, that's interesting. How, so, Felix, how like how, how how do you see this? Like from Facebook perspective, what, how how do you like what what's your like I don't know commitment, contribution, investment in terms of you know helping game developers to grow. 
as a, as a you know one of the biggest you know social media platforms. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, interestingly, you guys forgot Instagram to mention. Um, so I also want to throw this out there. So um, I mean, how we usually I mean, Facebook is a self-serve platform. Um, so you can actually start tomorrow or today um, to create campaigns, um, small campaigns to test performance. So I think um, it's it's a tool which enables you to reach your audience on the platform. And I don't want to spoil you with like big numbers or something like this, but um, I mean, imagine there's two billion people on Facebook, 700 million on Instagram, and um, like what we believe um, is that you can reach your target audience audience on our platform and um, this is how I would position um, us um, and how we can help um, gaming companies or professional apps or uh, all the verticals that you mentioned to reach their customers um, which are for uh, suitable for their product that's really interesting so let's 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 go into like some of the specifics a little bit later um, but gonna still gonna set the tone maybe Maybe each of you can share an example of like what you think it can be your campaign or, or just some from the market that like just successful, very successful, you know, games marketing campaign in general, like in social media. Do you have any examples? Sure. Um, maybe one quick example that I had the fortune to work with would, for instance, be the Boombeat games. Uh, in close cooperation, actually, with Felix's team, uh, we were looking to actually acquire users at good scale, but also with a high quality. And for instance, the app event optimized campaigns uh, were a great asset to us, partially also using the Smartly tool to really fine grain targeting, making sure to define the different audiences. And again, as Felix mentioned, essentially what we are after are the audience audiences and we need to follow where the audiences go to be able to ac acutely and precisely acquire them and bring them into the game and make sure that they are engaging with it. Mm. Um, yeah, for me, I find it hard to boil it down to like specific examples, and I also believe in like performance marketing in general. It's like you don't, you wouldn't call out any campaign because it's an ongoing campaign. So it's different from like the branding world where I don't know, there's Burberry and they would run like a, a big campaign for their new bag. Um, I would say, for example, you, Janos, or even you with Small Giant Games, you are working ongoingly on a great performance campaigns where you are acquiring user which are out ROI positively. And, um, and this can be either a big player, um, which from the guys who are already here or from, from the people who are in the audience, from like Rovio Supercell, or, but also for like smaller developers who can run really great campaigns uh, which are ROI positively on our platform. And I think this is, uh, this is something where, which I, I'm really excited about. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, I've been working in mobile games for uh, a really long time. So I've worked across many different types of games. And Facebook has always been a really important partner as, and a really important strategy from casual to mid-core to social casino, which I've, I've worked in. And uh, one of the success stories um, is uh, actually when I worked in social casino, it's um, a very niche audience, and so Facebook was a very crucial part of identifying people who are um, social casino players, and so um, the budget uh, was proportionately distributed to, to Facebook that way. That's interesting. I think, like, personally, um, and I know, like, my, my ad network friends will kill me after this. I, I used to run Unity Ads, uh, Global BD back in the days, um, um, and move on to Games Company and now help you smartly. But uh, I think what's really impressive if you look into um, performance marketing or user acquisition managers and, and, and game studios today, so the cr again, coming back to granularity of the Facebook, that what it enables. Back in the days, and I remember, you know, when we were ramping up actually Amplifier then sold to Unity, as, which is now the Unity Ads, and it was gonna big black box, right? You know, yeah, you work with an advertiser, you you get their idea of like these are the users you would like to acquire, etc. But it's still at the end of the day a little bit like a lot less control. I mean, obviously, ad networks have been developed a lot, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, what truly really impresses me when I'm looking into something, for example, with with honest what you were doing at the Armada, uh, using smartly and how 
how granular you can actually go, really trying to find exactly those users who will eventually not only, not only uh, spend their money on the game, but also engage and, and, and you know, going really, really, really heavily after exactly the quality user you need. Um, having said that, um, it's always great to hear like, good examples. There's always actually people learn a lot more from the mistakes. Um, anything you think you should not be doing on Facebook? Let's say you are starting your games marketing on Facebook. I mean, what are the, like, don't do this. Don't go there. Anything like, just one, <laughs> one, so, one, one, one thing you want to say? So I think maybe, the, uh, as always, it starts with the objective. If you're not clear about what you would like to reach, it will be very, very difficult to point. get there. Uh, so I think uh, quite a number of times, especially when I was talking with sometimes peers, we would all like to get sustainable traffic uh, over a longer time period. But the problem is, if we don't actually specify the goals and the objectives that we were trying to reach, you will not be able to measure them, and you will not be able to optimize for them. So to me, that's always kind of the starting point, uh, and it's pretty much irrelevant whether it's a Facebook user acquisition or social channel, or let it be any generic ad network. We do need to know what we try to reach. So, so basically what you're saying is that if, you, if it's not clear what you are after in terms of objective, you probably should not do it, right? You, you go back do your homework first. Correct. Right? So if you're talking about user acquisition, if you don't really know what you would like to achieve from such a direct response campaign, spend the money rather on App Store optimization. It will be paying yeah. off way better for you. Yes, yes, yes. Good example. And yeah, for me, it would definitely be, um, don't be, don't be afraid of the platform. I think that is um, a pretty complex platform, but there are so many great resources out there to kind of help you understand uh, the algorithm, the API, all the different products and how it works. And so um, often I actually talk to developers who say, oh, well, you know, I heard from this person and I'm trying what they're trying, but it doesn't work for me. And what I would encourage developers to do is um, educate themselves as much as possible and then experiment and kind of try to craft your own strategy. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, um, if we talk about social or other platforms, I think um, it's hard sometimes to get it working. And um, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't have my job. So I'm helping uh, companies to get this done and working for them. But I mean, what we are somehow preaching is like this test, learn, iterate approach. Yeah. So for example, I don't know, when Anvu comes to me and says like, Felix, this is not working. Um, I'm now spending my money somewhere else. Um, then I'm saying like, hey, come on, let's test it. Yeah? Let's get it right. So you would do another test, you would learn uh, what are the errors, um, the error sources, and you try to eliminate them, and then you continue actually iterating on your strategy. So this is how it would usually go. So test, learn, and iterate. Um, if you ask me specifically, I know tons of error sources uh, which could potentially go wrong, and uh, the the goal would be to eliminate them. Uh, I mean, I, I want to throw out there, like, for me, creative is still one of the most important things on in social or on Facebook slash Instagram slash Messenger um, because it is, has such a big impact on performance of your campaigns next to bidding, structure, or whatever. Uh, but I think the creative uh, aspect is really important. I'm a performance marketer. You can give me 100 creatives, and I find you the five which are working, or you find, like Janos will find you the five which are working. Uh, but the quality of the creative needs to be really high, and you shouldn't underestimate it. I compare Facebook always to a newspaper, and uh, if I would show you every day the same newspaper, you would start throwing tomato at us. Yeah? So, um, and that's why you need to create new, exciting content that actually makes people click and engage with your, with your brand. And uh, so I'm just throwing creative out there. If you have more ideas. No, no, I, I do agree perfectly with that. So uh, one of the, the biggest things that I have also seen that people unfortunately don't care enough about the creative optimization itself. Creative optimization is also an iterative process. So it does take time. It does take resources to produce. Uh, to give you a general rule of thumb, in an ideal scenario, you would be testing somewhere between five to 10 different new creatives every single week to try to find the one or two that is performing and then keep it 
accelerating even further from them. That's how you can sustain the performance. And uh, again, I do know that sometimes it does have a cost collateral. You either need an in-house marketing artist, you need an agency who would be doing this for. But yet again, this boils down to the point, are we reaching the objective? If we are reaching the objective, we need to make sure that we deck the resources and deploy the capital to make sure that it really generates a return on investment. There is very little use, as far as I'm concerned, in trying to start out a bigger marketing campaign, but essentially failing on the last five meters of the run and kind of failing there. Yeah, 100% makes perfect sense. I mean, when, when I was the uh, CRO for Outfit 7, I think, we are going to learn the hard way that, I mean, it's typical, I mean, whether you're a big or small games company, you easily fall in love, love with the stuff you do. So when we started, probably kind of structured the uh, like app store optimization. So we would have an idea of like, this is the best, best logo of this app forever. Like it's like so great, so these screen, screenshots. When we actually did proper testing, they were okay, but they were never the winners. Like if you do APCD test, these guys were like two or three. There was always somebody who was like performing better. Again, you know, goes to the iteration, goes to testing. Um, but the, um, to change the theme a little bit, so you had mentioned something important, like interesting in the beginning about the placements of Facebook. Now, just for the, for the audience here, like there are different placements on Facebook where you can kind of place your stuff. Like how do they differ from like, from like games marketing perspective? Is there something which is more valuable, something which you shouldn't use based on your experience? Uh, Okay, so uh, with respect to that, I think uh, placements, at least as far as I'm concerned, are usually secondary to media buying, especially on Facebook, because at the end of the day, what you are trying to achieve is a specific direct response, a specific uh, results. So the question that I would pose back, does it really matter to you whether your audience, you are following and engaging with them on the Instagram platform, on the Facebook Blue app, on the, I don't know, Messenger platform? As far as we are able to reach and engage with those audiences, I think the point of contact should be relevant because again, please don't forget, you are the one who needs to follow the audience. The audience will not follow you. That's a good point, yeah. Anything to add, guys? Uh, I'm just gonna talk about it from a user's perspective. So I am uh, an avid social media user. I am on everything and I, I really I love social media and for me um, the different placements of Facebook it's 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 done so well that you don't really notice that being an intrusive um, product so you know when you're as an advertiser uh, you can kind of feel confident placing ads in Facebook because like you know the way that it's integrated organically into the experience kind of helps it perform a lot better than say um, other you know other social media platforms or other ad networks where it's like very intrusive and people don't want to interact with it you agree with that Felix uh, of course <laughs> somehow yeah I, I agree with both I, I would say you mentioned a really interesting point with like it doesn't really matter where the people are coming from I think that is true um, to a certain extent, but I mean, it's also important to monitor performance of each placement. I mean, and I'm not only talking about like Facebook, Instagram, I'm also talking about like other, other social media platforms. I mean, you need to know what is the cost that for the person that you acquire on your individual platform. And the beauty is that you can break it down. Yeah, like with, uh, with, with Smartly or Facebook, you can actually see the, um, the performance of each placement broken down per, uh, per channel. Yeah, so you could see how much was the app installed in, uh, on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, and with like other uh, measurement partners such as Adjust or Apps Flyer, you would also see it from different channels. So I think that's important. And on the acquisition side of things, I also believe that, um, I mean, when, let's say when your media buying gets too big, I also believe that you should see it as different channels because the performance can also be different. So maybe there's a team that only works with Facebook and only a team with Instagram and, uh, and TV and out of home or something like this. So then at one point you would split it actually up. Yeah, raise your hands how many people are managing billion dollar budgets like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, smartly? Oh. I forgot, Smartly manages about one billion dollars a year, so well, well, for the clients. Um, this actually leads nicely to to metrics because um, kind of brings back a, a memory of another pocket camera panel 
few years back when actually I met Anne for the first time. You mentioned something about, there was somebody asking about uh, what's the difference for a UA manager when, you know, if you're an indie company or like a very big established company, you were then running the, the, the Rovio stuff like. And you, you mentioned something that you trust numbers. When you're big, you, you have to trust numbers, right? So, so then, you know, that enables you to scale. Now, talking about numbers or metrics, like, like what are the metrics you follow? Just for the, so those guys in the audience who are not necessarily spending every day and every second for a UA, what are the metrics? And particularly, of course, from the Facebook perspective. Oh, for me, um, everything is a metric, uh, only a few are KPIs. And for me, KPIs would be on the back end, on the product end. Uh, it starts on the product. So if your product has amazing KPIs and it has good LTV, uh, I definitely would kind of launch that into you know, Facebook and the ad networks and, and, and run that. But if your product has um, below average KPIs, then you know, you're not going to find success on Facebook. You're going to constantly be uh, underperforming. So uh, when we're talking about campaigns, I would always optimize the cohorts to kind of perform up to the standards of the product. So looking at things like LT, uh, CTR would be important for um, actually reach and delivery on Facebook. Uh, conversion. Uh, optimizes your your success, and then there are relevant scores on Facebook, which is really important, uh, and that is uh, tied into what these guys were talking about with creative. So the better the creatives you have, the more the more often your ad is shown, and the more people interact with your ads because uh, it's it's uh, an organic experience for them. But ultimately, ROAS also, right? Yeah, so um, like I said, the, the product LTV is going to be the guidance to how much you can spend on Facebook and, and kind of your strategy with Facebook. So uh, our ROAS is really important, our return on ad spend. Uh, to add to this a little bit, uh, I personally always prefer to monitor the whole funnel. So from the impression all the way to the post-install events and you know, picking the metric, as on very well mentioned, the key performance indicators that you are optimizing for will be the cornerstone of your strategy. So once you know the objective, you monitor the funnel and you focus on the critical points that you need to optimize for, and that's what is going to help you to build a sustainable portfolio. All right, makes perfect sense. This, this leads nicely to the uh, app event optimization. I mean, we've been speaking a lot about that with you, Felix. And, and to my understanding, you know, there's more and more game developers when they're growing users on Facebook, they're kind of heavily depending on their like, you know, structure based on app events. Uh, and I think, you know, Starting from something simple like you know just a you know purchase in a game, it's an event. You want to find those users, but like, what are you typically seeing, you know, Felix, with your kind of you know partners you work with? Like, what kind of events they follow, you know, basically after the install? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say like app, I don't know if everybody knows, but app event is an innovation in the app space. Yeah, so it's coming from ecom. Yeah, so where people place a pixel on a website and you can target people who did a certain event on your website. So you would optimize for, let's say, add to cart or a purchase on a website. This is now possible in an app. Yeah, so this is a game changer in the industry, in my opinion, and um, gives opportunity, but also challenges to others um, who might not be um, using app events. Because, um, I mean, it's interesting, I mean, a, if a company would optimize for app events, they're willing to pay a lot for a user. Um, and if you're just going for like volume, like the $2 install in the US, you would get that, but you would probably miss out on um, the value customers. And um, I think um, what I'm seeing in the industry is like that this is changing everything on like how you structure your campaigns, how you acquire user, how you would look at results differently. And uh, you guys can back me up here, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell you some example. And what, like, what are the events you are optim optimized against? Yeah. Small giant games. At Small Giant Games, we have a really um, great game that monetizes amazingly and it has uh, really good metrics. So it makes it really easy for us to kind of identify the points in the game where players 
make a purchase or perform an action. So uh, if, a face, uh, if a user connects to Facebook to kind of register their game, that's really a KPI for us because it indicates that a player is more than likely to engage with the game for a long time, and they're more likely to make a purchase at some point in their lifetime. Uh, if they finish the tutorial, that's also an indication that they're engaged with the game, uh, as well as um, uh, we pay for um, users who make purchases, just because then we pay a high upfront cost, but then they make purchases uh, regularly, or they make multiple purchases, and it definitely pays off when we're looking at uh, return on ad spend. Um, I can just pretty much echo what has been said. So whenever we are optimizing for events, I think ultimately, as we pointed out a couple of times, LTV or return on investment will be the ultimate goal. After all, this is to a certain degree investment management uh, for the company. Uh, having said that, identifying the critical earlier or maybe a little bit later engagement events that are a good proxy to the profitability metrics is going to help you to massively fine tune again the previously mentioned funnel. And it, 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 yeah, Felix, sorry. Can I add something to that? So I also believe um, it depends on which stage you are. So when you look, for example, at um, the soft launch stage of a game, you would probably um, try to acquire your early users yeah, for the game and then look at um, retention metrics from these users. And um, so you would look at, like, I don't know, Canada, Indonesia, and like smaller countries which are very similar to big markets. You would try to acquire them, and then you would move into the launch phase. And the launch phase is like the, the volume type of phase. And then you would go for install. But when you then, it comes a really important uh, changing point when you switch to actually making money. And um, then why do you acquire installs when you could actually acquire paying customers? Um, and that's also the, the, the interesting part. Of yeah, so basically it comes down to the point with app event optimization that um, it kind of gives you the indication where to bet your money. Like in a way, like, you know, don't spend it here. I mean, this, these guys went through, like, you know, tutorial, for example. They are most likely more valuable than the people who kind of got stuck before that, right? So kind of, you know, simplify it. Then there's tons of other events, of course, you can follow. I mean, you can, you can basically use any event that you want as, as long as you use, a, like, a, like, a, you know, partner to kind of feed that, feed that back to the uh, Facebook, right? Um, we have, like, a couple of more minutes, and, and there's a couple of things I wanted to kind of, kind of just, you know, Tick, you know, tick, tick the boxes. One is um, that, like, just going back to this, like, not necessarily scaling to jillions in terms of, you know, marketing spend on Facebook, but like starting and willing to scale. I mean, what are the typical problems? I mean, particularly you, Anne, and Yanis, you've had, you've gone through like different companies. I mean. From Social Point, who is spending tons of money, then doing more to startups and, and stuff like that, and so you and as well. So you kind of have this experience from like wide, you know, very different organizations. Now, what are the key challenges like for a UA manager when actually, you know, I want to start Facebook, I want to scale it, you know? So I would actually recommend saying one step before, one of the earliest challenges is actually getting the good budgets. Because as much as uh, I would like to say that you can make such a, a system work at lower spend, you do need to collect a certain amount of data points for the systems to be able to effectively work for this app event optimization, install optimization, pending whatever your objective is to hit those targets. And there is a learning curve and a learning cost to that. Uh, I think that would be the initial step. And the next step after that is, again, trying to find the right path of iteration. I think that's always the most critical. Uh, once we are seen the funnel, where do we break it? Is it App Store optimization? Is it the creative optimization? Is it maybe the onboarding funnel, the early iteration, or early engagement? And once we know, that's when we know how to step forward. Okay. Perfect. Anything to add? Um, yeah, one of the challenges is that UA in general is very intimidating, uh, especially Facebook is very intimidating, but um, before Small Giant Games had uh, have a UA team of me and my colleague Antti, um, we, we, we had um, our, our CPO who was doing all the Facebook campaigns, and um, it's something that you can pick up very quickly understand how it works. So you just have to get in there and, and get your hands dirty, and then um, you kind of teach yourself by doing. So it can be intimidating, but it can be done. All right. Uh, it, it, any of these tools, like, you know, smartly, I mean, there's other guys as well, like, you know, at, at what, what moment that comes useful? Just put it this way, like, you know, 
bluntly honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, bluntly honest. Um, something like smartly would definitely be something when you have um, either no knowledge of it and you can kind of use it as a guidance uh, and, and kind of someone holding your hand. Or if you're very sophisticated and you have a lot of budget and you need it to kind of uh, really kind of push it to the next level. All right, all right. Kind of scale, scale and kind of like you know, automate the nitty-gritty manual stuff, which actually takes quite a lot of time, regardless of where you actually buy your users from. All right. Um, uh, I can just agree fully with that. All right, all right. Um, we're kind of running out of time, but there's still one more. Um, last advice, first and last advice for game developer willing to start their Facebook marketing, acquiring users for games. One advice only, like, we are limited to one. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I would just pretty much tilt back to my original point, know your objective. All if right. you know your objective, you will be able to sort out how to set up the campaigns, what will be your critical points to measure, what will be the critical points to focus on. Yeah, and it, it, there's a lot of, you know, obviously support from Facebook and help, you know, for smart, whatever. So as long as you kind of got clear what you actually want, then, you know, it's not a problem to kind of, you know, build it up, right? And number one advice. Uh, yeah, definitely use the app event optimization if you don't know what you're doing. Facebook is doing it for you. It's automated. It, you tell it to find people who will spend money in your app, and based on the extensive data it has on users on Facebook, it will find people who will spend money in your app. Cool. Felix. I think my add? last one is um, just try it out, test, learn, and iterate. So. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'm not sure if you have any time for questions or if anybody wants to ask anything. You always want more. This is the thing I learned about Maker is always wants more out of it. There's always uh, more. Always more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go for it. We're only lunch next, so let's go for it. Any any questions for anyone else in the room? I mean, we're between. This is your chance. There's a question right here. Hello, Kim Okari from Rival Games. I had one question about terminal, terminology that a bit disturbs me. We game people tend to talk a lot about buying users when we actually talk about marketing. I would like to ask why we do that. Um, I think that requires like a, like a, like a six pack of beer to kind of <laughs> go through the philosophy. Um, well, it's, it's, I think it's, it's ease, isn't it? I mean, it's. A, I mean, we, we, make, we use a lot of language like whales and minnows and stuff like yeah. that, which is really offensive to people. <laughs> but we don't mean it that way because we have to have a shortcut because otherwise we're going to spend an hour talking about what we mean. Whereas if we say by user, mm -hmm. we're just saying we're going to go through the marketing process, which is direct response, which means that we can have this particular audience in this particular segment in this particular demographic. And therefore, we get that, and that's buying users. Of course, everybody has heard the stories about, about buying the so, uh, th There is this uh, not so nice stories about, about back in the days when there, was, there were in Asia some factories that really users were bought uh, to, to play a game. And, 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 and nowadays, we want to sort of like keep that memory up when we use that term, in, in, in my opinion. I mean, I, I, so my, like, so I have an idea now. Like, I think that is like because game game developers are just like we speak direct. Like, we don't we don't want to spend our time on talking poetry. Well, so Finnish marketing is spending spending money trying to find users. So you bite them, right? Like, so Finnish people speaking directly. I can't imagine that. Um, sometimes they do. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, not, I, not I actually really. think there's a bigger, deeper theory to it, which I have, which is we used to ten years ago be behind the curve with respect to gambling companies who were really good at this stuff. I think we're better now than they are, but that's just me and they've got a very specific audience. And if you were from that audience, that background, then it was the natural language to use because the actual emotional connection between the player and the experience was negligibly important. Whereas I think for us, as designers in particular, we love what we make and we want people to love it too, not just chuck cash at it. Is that fair, guys? Yes, it is, yeah. 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 Cool. Sorry, I, I, you can't put a microphone in my hand without me talking. <laughs> um.